All right, I'm gonna tell him. All right, all right. Stop, stop. You are easily replaced. Easily. Unbelievable. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here in my studio in Manhattan with Sheila. And we are here like really after hours. There is no more sunlight coming in this daylight studio. That's why it looks pretty dark in here. But we're gonna fix that. So this is something that's super easy relatively low cost and actually a lot of fun and kind of organic because you you never really have full control in this situation but that's kind of the fun of it in this day and age i feel like everybody has some sort of little pocket light whether it be something like this which is the nan light uh sc Lido light sc uh it's a little tiny pocket light very lightweight but it's rgbw it has all the colors in it you could want in a little tiny form factor, and it can actually cycle through the colors. I also have this Nanlite Pavo tube, this 10 inch tube. So this is around a hundred bucks. And what's really funny about this one is it's magnetic. So if you were in a hard spot, you could actually just throw it on like a metal door or something. Like you, you, it's just a lot of fun, but it also has a quarter 20 on it. Either way, this also lets me cycle through colors. So these are constant light sources. And with the lights completely out and outside, which means no sunlight coming in here, which is a constant light source, we can play with some lower powered constant light sources. So once you have control over your space completely, you can actually adjust your exposure relatively easily for light sources that might not be so dominant otherwise. Uh, we're gonna mix some strobes in here. So here's what we're gonna do. Two zones, which we talk about a lot, right? Zone one is Sheila, because you're always number one. You're, oh, I don't care what they say about you. You're always number one. Zone one, Sheila. Zone two, the back wall. So what we have to do is kind of play a game of balance. On the back wall, we're gonna throw one, maybe both of these back there and rotate the color. We're gonna get an exposure for that in our camera, and then we're gonna bring in the strobes and match the exposure we need for the aperture. This is kind of how you do it. You kind of uh, get the exposure for the lower powered light source first, and then you bring in your higher powered. That way you can always dial back your strobe, but you can't ever dial up the constant light or the, the lower powered light, right? Makes sense. You can always take away power from a higher powered light source, but you can't go past the maximum on, a, on something small like this. So let's get this into play. And what's gonna happen here is that back wall is gonna cycle through colors. And every shot we take is gonna give us a different background color, which is so much fun. You can change how frequently these uh, rotate the color. I'm gonna turn it on right now. You can actually see that it is giving me all these different colors relatively quickly. So click, 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 click yellow, blue, green, all these different color backgrounds, every different shot, which is so much fun to, to mess around with and gives you a, a pretty wide gamut of shots when you're done with it. So let's put this on a stand. I'm gonna throw it right here on this carbon nanopole. It's a super light light, so it's going on a super light uh, stand. I'm just gonna put it right there on the quarter 20. And we're gonna put this halfway between the wall and Sheila and we're going to put it right between her shoulder blades pointing towards the wall. That's going to give us as much even of a spread as we can get. Let me put this in here. And yeah, so you guys should be able to see that that background is just like flying through colors. Now, the challenge here is for me, this is a constant light source right here lighting me. So we might have to shut this off to really get a true exposure for this backlight. Uh, what we want to do is get a silhouette of Sheila and then we want to get our strobes in to get exposure for Sheila. Makes sense. So let me just uh, move this over a little more. And you guys can see the light back there. It's right here. As we go along, if I want to add more lights, I can always throw this one in there as well. What's fun about this, if this is running a different color, then you might get a crazy mix of mosh back there. And uh, also the other thing to note is since shutter speed is really what can dictate the exposure on your constant light without affecting your strobe, you can actually slow down your shutter speed more and more and more to really meld the colors and get even different colors that you wouldn't get otherwise when it's stuck on a specific color when you take the shot. So meaning if I slow it down to like a 15th of a second, it would give me three colors in the exposure that would mix together. You might not like it, but it's an option. So I've been talking a lot. Let's get an exposure for the back wall and then we will uh, bring in some strobes and get Sheila lit up. 
Let me take a look. Yeah, so that's the problem. We're gonna have to shut this light off. I'm gonna go dark, guys. It's just gonna look like a disco in here, I guess. Uh, I don't know if people even go to discos or anything, but whatever. Click that off. All right, so it's pretty dark in here. I apologize. Let's get an exposure for that back wall, and then we'll worry about the strobes for Sheila. So I am at 100 ISO. I'm not gonna creep that up till I have to. Uh, I'm at F4, which is as wide as I can go on this lens. And I'm just looking, since this is a mirrorless camera, it's a Nikon Z6 II, I can really just basically see what's going on. In fact, how about I give you guys a live view while we do that, and you can actually see what I'm looking at. So at 100 ISO at F4, the widest aperture I have in here, there's the light behind her. I can either speed up my shutter and really subdue that color, or I can slow it down and the more I slow it down, the brighter that color gets. You can actually see it starting to affect Sheila. We don't want that. We want to keep these separated. So at about a 30th, it looks pretty saturated. If I go even slower, if I go too slow, what's going to happen is it's going to keep on melding the color in the shot. We might not like what we get, but let's go to a 30th. Let's take a quick shot. And we should get like some sort of blue background. I'm thinking, yep, blue background. That looks pretty good. Now all we need is strobes for Sheila and we can actually just have a constant changing background. So let's do that. I'm gonna turn this light back on so you can see what we're doing. We have our exposure for, wow, for the, uh, for the back wall. Now what we have to do is get our strobes in here and match the power of the strobe to the F4 at ISO 100 that I'm set to. Not hard, TTL, let's do this. I'm gonna keep this really, really simple. I'm just gonna use two speed lights. Rawr, this is a Profoto A1. We're gonna turn this on in group A. And I tell you what I'm even gonna do. I'm gonna go to that back wall and I'm gonna shut off the light back there so we can just focus on zone one. So I'm gonna shut this off really quick. Boom. Now all I'm gonna worry about is the metering on Sheila. And I, in a situation like this, I use spot metering. I find spot metering helps out a lot with TTL in tricky situations. Uh, so you're worried about someone wearing like all white and you wanna get their skin tone uh, pretty solid, go to uh, spot metering on their face. You'll probably get a better result or something you're more happy with because uh, it's metering from that one point that you care more about. Uh, so we're gonna put this in here. I'm probably gonna put in a second light, but let's just start with this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put on a trigger. This light is not doing anything. It's just the trigger. Okay, it is on. We are in TTL and I'm just gonna take a quick shot. Oh, you know what? So I can't actually take the shot as is. If I leave it at a 30th of a second, we're gonna see the exposure of this light come in because it's a constant light source, remember? So instead of shutting that light off and having no light to work with, my solution is I'm gonna speed up my shutter speed to 200 a second, my flash sync, eliminate this exposure as much as I can, because all we care about is the flash being having the proper power for F4. So if I go to my TTL, I gotta look on it, boom, I take a shot. We take a look at the tether, and there, Sheila, the only exposure is the, the speed light, which is great. She looks pretty dramatic though. We could give her a second light. I think I'm gonna do that. Let's give her uh, a fill light. So I have another speed light right here. We're gonna walk it in and we're gonna put it into group B. And because I already see the power on that light is actually really low, it's set to three. I'm going to just go ahead and dial this one to two. So it's not gonna be a one for one. It's gonna be a little bit underexposed compared to my key, meaning I'm not gonna have completely gone shadows, which is really what I want right now. I just wanna have like a little bit of shape but fill in those shadows. I'm, I'm thinking way too much about a mannequin shot, but this is what we do, guys. This is what we do. So it's like an under over with the pro photo soft bounce on either one. I'm, a, I'm actually a pretty good big fan of these things. Uh, you know, some people not really into them, but I like them. So let's take a look at that shot and nice. So she's filled in pretty decently and we have, so you can see the difference right there, right? Key light, key light with a fill underneath. So you have either or. You could do uh, some pretty dense shadows and have some uh, some nice shape to her, or you can fill in those shadows and have more of a glamoury type look. Whatever you wanna do, the strobes are really up to you as far as wherever you wanna take that. Let's turn on that back light now. And now I already know that at F4, my strobes are where I want them. At F4, 
the backlight is where I want them. But what isn't there is my shutter speed. I sped it up just for the strobes, right? Because I didn't want this light affecting me. This is a problem of my current situation. You probably aren't gonna have someone videotaping you with a giant light in front of your face, also lighting your subject. So what I can do is go back to slowing down my shutter to a 30th where I made my first exposure for the background. Now I can shut this light off. And now we're gonna take this shot. Let's go into a live view so you guys can see what I'm seeing. All right, so you guys see that that back wall is rotating through colors and every time I take a shot, it'll be a different color against that wall, which is really fun. Uh, and I'm gonna go into live view so you can actually see that happening. All right, it's a party in here, woo! You're actually looking at it, right? So there, you're actually seeing every time I sh take a shot, it'll change the color. Let's, um, let me move this over a little bit so that you can actually see uh, Sheila. I'm gonna move her over to the other side of the frame a little bit. Now here's what's fun about this. I'm at a 30th of a second to match the wall back there, right? We wanted the, the exposure to be brighter, so slower shutter allows a little bit more of that light to enter my lens. I could also speed up my shutter. It'll dim it, but it might actually give me a different color because it'll be less mixy, right? So anyway, the fun part about this, I feel like I keep going on tangents, I apologize. The fun part about this is because I'm wide open, the speed lights can recycle extremely fast. And so I don't have to worry about anything. It's like boom, 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 boom. See that? Blue, some kind of rust color, another blue one. We got red up here. We got another, what is that? Brown, olive, I don't know, chocolate going on there. Here's some teal. We got some purple going on right here, which is fantastic. Oh. That's kind of a fun color. And this is just every shot different. Bang, 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 bang. That's what's so fun about it, right? Now, I could play games and let's like really slow the shutter down and see what happens. If I'm at like a 10th, right? You guys hear how slow that shutter is? It'll mix the colors differently. So now I have a brighter blue, a brighter olive, a brighter pink. Right, so the shutter speed actually will not only dictate the exposure, but the types of colors we get. In fact, if I boost it back up to about, uh, I don't know, let's go to a 160th, let's just do that. 160th of a second, if I boost it up to that, click, 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 click. You guys will see a different color. Actually, look, it's, it's way underexposed, right? But you might like the subtle, the subtle color. You might like that subtle exposure, that it's there, but it's not really overpowering. And this is all just from shutter speed, which is the funnest part of the whole thing. So, I mean, you can just keep going after this. You can find something in the middle. Let's do a 60th, let's see what we get there. And you'll get different colors. That's a pretty saturated blue, actually. But you see how the 60th of a second is a little bit faster, so I'm getting two frames per color now of the same, like the same two blue, get it? It's, it's really interesting how this is working, but it's something that's so fun you get a couple of people in front of your lens, you just play games, bang, bang, bang. You know, you, you zoom out, you give them like something different. Yeah, look at that. And it, it'll actually change the background light a little bit, right? So all these options this is like one of the funnest things. Now, this is all well and good, but here's what I wanna do because uh, this is something I haven't tried, but why not try it with you guys in front of me? We also have this little guy, right? Well, why don't I put this on a super clamp and mount it right there on that same stand. I'll just clamp it right underneath the other light and we'll have two colors going at different times. I don't know what this is gonna do. I don't know if it's gonna do anything. It might just mix colors for all I know. Let's make the lights go burp, 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 burp. So this is on what they call a hue loop. And because it has a quarter 20, I can just screw it to this, this super clamp. If you don't know what a super clamp is, they're one of the best things ever created. I mean, they'll let you do anything. So let's clamp this to the stand in the back and get something cool. Now, this isn't to say that you couldn't make these your key and fill light either, right? Like this could be something you light your model with instead of the strobes from under over, right? So that's something to keep in mind as well. Maybe that's something you wanna do. All right, so we have two different lights going at two different colors. We might just get like a, some unicorn vomit going on here, but I'm into it. Let's shut this light off and let's get back into the tether. You can actually see that there's some weird stuff going on over there, right? Click, click, click. 
Let's see what we're getting. We're getting eh, nothing crazy, just a bunch of mixes, right? Let me see. Nah, eh, nothing crazy. Well, we tried it, right guys? And that's kind of the point. Also, I think there's something to be said for when you do stuff like this, uh, your models get into a different frame of mind. Like it, it's kind of interesting to see uh, how models, let's see if I can zoom out. Maybe I'll get more different, like a gradation of two different colors. Nah, there, there's, it's, there's a gradation of colors. It's just not that crazy. Um, what we could do is raise the stand a little bit, but I'm afraid that if I do that, um, I'll be playing with that like the entire video and I don't think that's like any fun, but check that out guys. Uh, when you do stuff like this and there's colors flying around, your models kind of get psyched. It's a lot more fun. It's, it's more dynamic. It's interesting. You know, they kind of get into it. So there's something to be said for that as well. I mean, this is actually a pretty cool color. This is like that chocolate, uh, I think uh, Roscoe or is it Lee? Uh, it's number 99 is the gel called chocolate. But this pink is, is ignited. Look at that. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So think about it. We could have just shot the Sheila with just one speed light. Instead, we got all this craziness. And how fast did we shoot this? We got all these different colors. Now imagine your model is actually posing and moving. I'm not saying you're a bad model. I'm just saying that some models actually pose, Sheila. Crazy idea, crazy idea, Sheila. I don't know. But yeah, if your models could actually twist, go one way or the other, bah, 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 you have a lot of options there. So I hope this was kind of uh, fun for you guys. Uh, it was pretty fun for me. I know Sheila just had a blast. Look at that. She's going to be up all night. She's just going crazy. Anyway, uh, look at some of these lights and see if they have these options for rotating colors. Both of those lights are under $100. I, the tube is $100, I think. But, uh, you know, you catch sales or whatever. Either way, uh, I do like what Nanlite's putting out there. So maybe check that company out. Uh, whatever it is, it's really easy for them to uh, program these lights to go through cycles like this. And it's super fun. And you might even like it just for your own. You could slow it down and maybe have it for the background of your Twitch stream or whatever. But uh, there's multiple uses for uh, constant LED RGBW lights like this. Tubes are super fun. The fact that that one is magnetic is, is awesome. I, I really like it. And the quarter 20 means when I, not only can I screw it down onto that stand, but I could actually screw two of them together and make a four, uh, 20 inch tube. So two foot tube right there if you got two of them. So anyway, hope you guys like this. Let me know down below if you like seeing kind of stuff like this. I'm still trying to find my footing on this channel a little bit. I want to get the identity rolling, but you know, I've been uh, kind of putting this channel on the back burner. I'm trying to change that if you haven't noticed. We've been doing a lot of stuff on this channel and uh, thank you guys for joining me. If you guys want to check out any of my work, you can find me at Last X Witness on Instagram. You can join me on uh, Twitch Live if you want to have some discussions, share some work, photo critiques, or just hang out with a bunch of other photo nerds to troubleshoot some things you're having issues with. The Discord as well as link below. Write me on Twitter, whatever. Last X Witness on everything. You can't miss. All right, for those of you who just met me, my name's Seth Miranda. Thanks for joining me. Hit like, share this video around. Don't forget to subscribe and the bell for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Later. Say good. It's fine. Say goodbye. I wasn't trying to block you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go. There they are.